This is a McLaren MP412C, and no, it's not my car. And this is the engine and transmission out of this McLaren. And it's broken, very broken. I'm Sean, and if you're new to the channel, I do McLaren stuff. But it's normal repair, maintenance, and that kind of thing. But sometimes you get an opportunity to do something way more ridiculous. And this is Kevin, this is Eddie, and between the three of us, we're gonna tackle something big on this car. We're going to pull the engine out, replace the camshaft, and the cam phasers, so this thing can get running again. So we're gonna show you the entire process, start to finish, of removal, tearing down the engine, replacing the parts, putting it back in, and then you're gonna wonder, why did I watch this video this long? So let's get started. So we're starting disassembly uh, so far. We've got a cover that goes on the engine over here, cover that goes on the reservoir right here. Those are easy to take off. There's also a uh, hatch cover. It goes right here. That has been unbolted, manually triggered, so we can get the tonneau cover up because here's how we get access to everything back here. There's another plate. Take all the screws out, get that out of the way, and that's where we're at now. We're gaining access to the top of the engine so we can start disconnecting hoses, connectors, all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so now we've got the car up in the air and we've taken everything on the bottom off. So we've got the wheels out, the inner fender liners out, diffuser is off both sides. We've got the bottom trays uh, that go from all the way up there, all the way back to here. That is two different plates, one large one, one small one. And now we're starting on draining fluids. So we've got one of the radiators that's up here. We're draining fluid from there. We're gonna let that drain for a while. We're gonna go over to the engine side We've got our other coolant hoses that go in the water pump over here. We're going to get these all drained. We're gonna drain engine oil. And I believe we're also gonna do transmission. We're gonna do the whole shebang bang uh, There's a few oil leaks on this engine that we've gotta find and address. It's leaking from up here. It's all over the place down here. So we've gotta find and identify where that's leaking from. And we have the engine out, also address those because that is the time to do it. So that's where we're at. The bottom is apart, we're draining all the fluids, and then we'll get to the point where we can start taking off little bits and pieces that we need to, and take the entire subframe assembly and drop it out. But first, we've gotta get all of the hoses and all the other stuff on the top end disconnected. So we'll come back when we get to that point.
And this is where we're at now. We're about uh, 11, 12 hours in. You might notice that the engine is still in it because of all the stuff you have to take loose to make this happen. There's all kinds of hydraulic lines for the air brake and all kinds of stuff. There are coolant lines. There's electrical connectors, harnesses, every which way. Things for the air that go up to the intercoolers, back down, one of the intercoolers is out right now. The other one, I believe we're gonna be able to leave in there. We've gotta get mass airflow sensors out so we can get the pipes that come down. Basically everything that has anything that goes around any which way has to be disconnected for this to drop out the bottom. A lot of cars would come out of the top. This can only come out of the bottom. The engine and transmission come out together, or at least we are going to do it together. Uh, but to even get to that point, what we do have left is we've got to take the axles out. And to do that, we've got to get the spindle and rotor and everything else. So we're gonna figure out how we're gonna get that loose. We've got one other air pipe up under here to take out. And uh, once we get that out, then this will be kind of loose over here. Uh, the air conditioning, we've got to get that loose. So that's right over here. We gotta get these lines, so we've gotta make sure that we don't kill the environment and uh, make sure that all of our refrigerant is contained. Uh, once we get all of this loose, then we can get to the point where we can actually drop this out, and that will be a moment of glory. Give yourself a high five. Great success. We managed to get all of this separated. Uh, we did run into a few things where you go to pull it up and then you have random lines that you find you may have missed or uh, you know didn't get, for whatever reason, they were not connected. You just gotta go real, real slow. And then you find what's pulling, disconnect it, work through it. We had this guy and we had this guy. And between the three of us, we kept an eye on everything, slowly bumped it up. Got everything loose that we needed to. I went for a ride, it was OSHA approved. And now we've got the power unit out. This is the transmission. So it goes up to here, and the rest of this is engine. We've uh, covered up all the airlines up to these uh, gloves are. It's covering up to make sure we don't get any debris or anything in anything that can take in air. Uh, the fluids, we've pretty much got drained, so those aren't going anywhere. And there's just a bunch of hoses and all kinds of goodies that are attached here. But this is it, and it is finally out. So from here, we have plenty of room to work and get the rest of this done, which is gonna be replacing the cam, the cam phasers, and then additional maintenance is gonna be done uh, because the coil packs and spark plugs are way easier to get to right now than when they're up there. Uh, they actually hit right around here and over there. And they're very, very difficult to get to from the top in the car. So now the engine's out, all that maintenance is going to be done, make it a lot easier. So the next portion of the video should be a bit of teardown. Okay, so where we left off, we are on a new weekend on this project. And now I can give you another look and kind of explain what exactly is that we're doing. This is the M383T, the 3.8 liter twin turbo. There's one, there's the other. And is used uh, in all of the normal people McLaren cars starting in 2012 year model and going all the way up through the 570S. So every car up until the introduction of the four liter that's used in the 720S, 765, Senna, Speedtail, and Sabre 
Um, every other car has this engine uh, or a slight variation of it. They call it the same thing, put an E on the end, say we put new parts in it and it's the same engine. So this is using that. The transmission is also the same in all of those, except for uh, a couple tweaks along the way. So the issue with this is there was a code that was being thrown and the reason for it, as we discovered, was because of the cam. That's why the cam is being replaced. So this is the new cam. And one of these little guys is the reason why it broke off. It's, it's not there. And that's what's causing all of the issues. So we're gonna have to take this whole motor apart to change out the cam, which will solve the problem. Now it wasn't preventing this from turning over, or running and that kind of thing but it was not operating correctly. And we also don't know where that little chunk is. So we've got to figure out where it is, make sure that's not going to cause a problem and be good to go. To do that, we have to separate the transmission from the engine. And then we've got a lot of work ahead of us with all this little stuff we have to take off. It's a job. So here we go. Another thing that you may have noticed uh, through all the prior footage is this guy is in a wheelchair. Now he's not always in a wheelchair. He is just currently in a wheelchair. He was in a very, very bad car accident about four months ago and he's recovering. Uh, so no, we're not forcing him to stand and do work. <laughs> we're not, it, it's nothing like that. This is a, uh, I don't say a voluntary thing, but we are helping um, he does know what's going on. He, he does have a hand in all this and he's doing all the work that he can do. We just sometimes need somebody who can stand up and do things or stand up longer and do things. So you're probably gonna see him rolling around the motor because this is his level, he can work on it. Uh, but it is a group effort and we are not forcing him to do anything he doesn't already want to do. Okay, working on getting coil packs and plugs out. These are already pulled out and you can see plugs are way down there. Not uncommon. That's one of those things that you do on a lot of cars. That's, that's just how they're done. You should know that by now. But in taking these coil packs off, we've got some interesting things here that remember, you might be trying to do this in the car. Those bars, they're in the way all the time. So now's a great time to do that because you know it's easy once you pull the whole engine out. So we've got eight millimeter bolts up here. That's what holds on the coil pack. Pretty much like any other engine. Um, we do have a little rubber piece down there right below it that spaces it off. And uh, you don't want to accidentally back that out because that's going to be a bad time. That's going to lead you to where we are now because you can't fix that in car. So uh, make sure you don't over torque going in and you won't have that problem coming out or you shouldn't have that problem coming out. So real easy to get these coil packs out and I can show you what it, they're supposed to look like and not supposed to look like. So these coil packs, which by the way, are found in a lot of other cars. These are not McLaren exclusive. Uh, I believe a Nissan Sentra is where you might find these in the United States. In Europe, it's a few other cars. But there's your Bosch right there with a part number made in Germany. And uh, yeah, these things you can buy off the shelf at any auto parts store. You don't have to get them from the dealer for the like 100 and whatever dollars it is. You can, in fact, pick these up for about 25 bucks on the cheaper end. If you want to get the really fancy replacement Bosch ones, I think they're about 60. But uh, here we're good. Here we're bad. It's a little bit of corrosion. So that corrosion uh, can be an indication of moisture. It can also cause a misfire as a result of a poor connection. So when we get the plug pulled out, we want to make sure that we have no corrosion uh, on the connection itself can't really see down there so well. Uh, might be okay down there, we don't know. But when we check the plug itself, we can see that connection 
and make sure that's good. So that is something that you definitely want to check whenever you have any of these things out, especially if you've had a misfire. Okay, so we've got one of the valve covers off. He's taking the other one off right now. Um, what we're pretty sure of is this side, not the issue. Uh, these are the teeth that I pointed out before, and all of these seem to be there. Uh, everything normal from what we can tell thus far. We're gonna pop the other side off and check it for sure. So it's not either of these cams. Now the cam phasers are these guys, which sometimes when you read on the internet, they go, ah, the cam phasers go bad. It's gonna kill your engine. That's what these are. And uh, periodically, you know, there, there might be a problem. It's not an every engine thing. It's not a this year or that year or an early car. Or it just, it's a thing that sometimes happens. This is what you gotta do to get to them. Take the engine out, go to this point. So if you have a phaser problem, yeah, it kind of sucks to do, but that's what these guys are. Um, so that's where we're at on this. We're gonna check the other side. Okay, so we got this side off and we've got a jackpot moment right there is uh where that broke off you can kind of see it and where did it go well part of it is down there where the oil passage goes through and then there's another little chunk right down there so we definitely know which one it is and definitely know what happened and found the pieces that could have gone much worse uh, could have gotten thrown around anywhere in here and landed between springs that could have broken a spring. Uh, it could have gone all the way through the passage and gotten into the rest of the system, which could have caused catastrophic problems. So I guess this is the best case in a, a bad scenario. So we're gonna get this swapped out, do the cam phasers, and then we can put this back together and that's the worst part of this issue. So now we've got some things figured out. As I said, we found the, uh, the part that was missing here and I showed you that. And now we figured out what was down there. It belongs right there. Uh, that tappet broke. So this lobe is not turning. So one valve is not opening. And there's 16 of them. So one of them not opening, you may not notice unless you're just going full potato in this thing because it's ridiculous power. And uh, that's how that got broke. Most likely is that broke off. How, why, we're not sure. Could have been a casting defect, who knows. But my guess is that broke off, caught the edge of this, broke that off, and then it started showing up in the instrument cluster as a, an error that it had to look at. And that's how this whole thing started. So on the front of the motor here, Remember, we're replacing the cams over here. So on the front of the motor, we gotta take all of this apart so we can get to the timing chains. So those are gonna go up here and turn these gears. But first, we've gotta make sure that it's top dead center so we know everything is where it's supposed to be. We're gonna take this off, then loosen up the guides so we can get slack on the chains to take the chains off to change the cam. So it's one of those, this connected to this, connected to this, connected to this, and this is where we've gotta start. All right, we've made progress. We've got the cover off. And I think Kevin has a new rap name. He could be Three Chains. Because there's three chains. Two chains was already taken, so. Yeah. And, step on each other. And I mean, he's just obviously one chain better. So we've got one that goes down there that uh, I believe that ends up going to the, where does that this one go? This goes to the oil pump. So that was the oil pump. Water pump. Oh, there's, wait, it's four chains. I just couldn't see the chain. I knew there was a chain that went over here. So it's actually four chains. Start the segment over. At the moment, we're about to find top dead center. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. But the old fashioned way is we can take a spark plug out of cylinder number one and put some long straight object that won't hurt anything 
I'm actually touching the top of the piston here, and as we rotate the engine over in a cl clockwise fashion, we'll be able to see the screwdriver coming in and out. And once it's fully extended, that would indicate we're at top dead center. We can then use the rest of our timing reference points to determine if that is on the compression stroke. And primarily, we're gonna start looking at things like, are these cam lobes, this is the pointy part, engaging the valves below? Or they here, they're pointed away, so this valve is fully closed. That's an indication. The other thing is we can see these curves on the back of the camshaft. There's flat spots on three sides and curves. And we'll come back to that in a moment. But once we have it top dead center, those will be in the right position. But as we're, as we're turning the engine over, we're, we're finding very quickly all the camshafts just immediately, the lobes here, oiled themselves, which is great. That's fantastic. It's exactly what you want to see. But this engine is actually a part because it did have a problem. There is something broken on the other side, the other head. And what we just realized, everything oiled itself up very quickly when I was turning the engine, except for these two lobes. And this just happens to be the point where we have a broken cam follower. This guy here I'm pointing to is broken. So we're gonna keep a close eye on this. We're gonna make sure that we are getting oiling as we rotate the engine here on these cam lobes to make sure that's not part of the issue that caused the, the reason the engine had to come out to replace the camshafts. So, and if we wanna watch, we can watch this particular, we'll go back to cylinder number one. The screwdriver tells us where we're at. And let's watch these cam lobes. These are gonna come around to the flat spots. See if we're coming up. We can see the back up a little bit, you can see the screwdriver come all the way up. And it looks like we're, once these are flat, we have the cam positioning tool, guys. Mm -hmm. Once these are flat, we'll be able to put the cam positioning tool right there. And this engine should be fully timed so we can then take off the cam phasers, the cam shafts on the other side when we start replacing the broken components. So you can see this is gonna, we're gonna do a little more adjustment because obviously it's a very tight tolerance, but once this is in place, we will be able to bolt it in and then it that locks the camshafts in this position so they cannot rotate as we replace the hardware that needs to be removed. Okay, so we're having a lot of fun with our engine. We're going to talk about some of the nuances of this particular engine and what we want to do to make sure we're we're timed. Basically, we have everything in alignment so when we take it apart, it goes back and every the, the valves, the pistons, and everything are still in the same timing. So, number one you're looking for timing marks. And the factory gives you some clues. They tell you things that you need to do. One timing mark on this engine, this is the crankshaft. It goes all the way through the engine. Under the bottom, toward the rear of the engine, there's a plug that we remove out of the bottom. And there's a pin that can go into that to make sure the crankshaft, once it's no longer connected to the, the rest of the valve train, it, it doesn't rotate independently. One visual clue we have at this point is there's a green dot there's actually a recess in here with a green dot. And then of course the camshafts have a, a flat area, which we explored earlier, but that's locked in with these, these two guides. What we were unsure of, and there's no documentation for this, so McLaren is uh, elusive. They don't really share everything. But what we found, there's no documentation that tells us how this particular cam phaser should be positioned or clocked. The phasers themselves do have a tiny timing mark. You can see that here and it aligns on the center and this can rotate somewhere around 60 degrees which from here to maybe here is 90 degrees. So it can it can rotate upon the, the pivot point of the center of this crank, uh, camshaft quite a bit and it's controlled by oil flow coming through the backside. 
a matter of fact, that's really very clever how they did that. There's a larger cavity around the bolt here, which allows the oil to flow into these cavities. And then internally, depending on the command given by the solenoids driving this oil in here, this will allow this to advance or retard to make more power. Of course, needle bearings here, which are very nice. So what we've determined, probably said that twice now, is that this is ambidextrous. There's no particular timing location that this has to have. We can insert this a full 360 degrees. The engine will control the position of this phaser internally with the oil that we just discussed, but we know the phasers are coming back to their natural resting position because these two marks are lined up and we've checked all four of our phasers and we're confident that we don't have a broken phaser at this point. That could cause us to be totally out of time other than the timing cam alignment tool. Moving forward, these chains are under tension with these ramps and you can see I'm moving this one a little bit here. This is the tensioner and we've already uh, We've already applied tension. We weren't real sure how this was gonna go, but we used a screwdriver. It did not take much pressure at all, pushed upward, and then we inserted this incredibly expensive three millimeter pin designed specifically for McLaren's. Of course, we know it's just a drill bit, right? But it's holding this up, and now we have no tension on the, on the ramp. Please note, this is not just for this engine, any engine, these the, the plastic that this material is made out of is extremely brittle. And what I mean by that is, if you were to take your screwdriver and pry here to compress this, you're probably gonna fracture or break this ramp, which means it's gonna have to be trashed. And these, you don't even wanna know the price on these. Most cars, a couple hundred dollars for a set. This car could be a thousand, who, who knows, a couple thousand. So don't get yourself in trouble with those. This is bank two of the McLaren 383T engine. We're going to release the pressure on this tensioner so we can then remove both of the cam phasers and see if I can do this one handed. It helps if you got two people. Thank you, sir. Ready? Tough, huh? Okay. All the way in? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna take a little bit more shoulder effort. Okay, but now our taming chain is loose and we've already removed these bolts. We can slide off the intake phaser and then we can remove the exhaust phaser. They are still on this ramp. I'm not going to remove the ramp if we don't have to. There we go. All right. Just let that hang. And we're actually going to remove both these camshafts because this is where the offending camshafts are. All right, so we've got all of these parts taken off now so we can change out both cams. Now, the bottom one is the one that had the tooth that was broken off. The top one had some damage where the follower came off and then rubbed on it and, and gouged it up. So we went ahead and replaced the top as well. Here are all the parts we've taken off. Uh, there's various things for spacing. Uh, so you got all these guys. You wanna make sure those are in the exact same spot because they're very, very precise, precisely, not precisely, <laughs> they are uh, very specific 
down to micrometers, very, very small. So they're down in the micron where they need to be. So all of these are labeled on where they go uh, to make sure they go back in the same way. This is the one that was broken. So what we originally thought was the tooth uh, that broke off that was the whole problem. Um, we weren't sure how it broke. And then we thought, well, where it broke off there, that's gotta be what happened is that piece broke off, got caught, it, it, it and then broke the tooth off the cam. This piece broke off and wedged itself in. This piece went flying backwards and we're way over here and it wedged itself right between these teeth and the body of the, the head and it snapped the tooth right off. And then we Clean wanted break. a little bit more confirmation and we found a mark. A witness mark right here. Right there. So it's like we had a Jehovah right there. It's a witness mark. And uh, it just a slight, tiny, tiny indention. And that's where it spun around this way, caught it, bam, broke it off. And that's how we got to here, because that's what happened. You can see these assemblies are already here, all four finger cam followers. McLaren says this is a whole assembly. We're gonna replace this one. Pay attention to the orientation of everything. You can see there are actually oil galleys here where oil flows. The oil flows from the engine block through the head, pressurizing and lubricating these fingers, which then transfers and lubricates the, the camshaft lobes. Very important. The other thing that's important to notice, this is a dowel pin that's for alignment. The one on the other side came out, this one stayed. If I look at our new assembly, we actually have new dowel pins already inserted, so we don't want to leave this by accident. That's going to cause us to have a really bad day if we don't take that out. So paying attention and taking your time, notice all the little things. It's going to make it a lot easier and save you a lot of headache. <laughs> we're having lots of fun here in the shop. Specifically, though, we're, we're being very deliberate and making sure that as we put this back together, we want to make sure that of course, we've torqued our new assembly incorrectly, but we've also gone back and checked the torque on the existing assemblies to make sure that they're still within spec as well. Why not, right? We're already here. It's that little extra step that can make all the difference in the world. We've got our cam follower fingers with the shims correctly placed underneath. We're about to now reinstall the intake camshaft on the top and the exhaust camshaft on the bottom. We're gonna to torque everything per the book to 10 Newton meters, that's what these two were, and so are the camshafts. Once they're in, there is very much a correct torque sequence. You must follow it, or you can do damage to the camshaft. So we'll be doing that as well. Interesting to see a little bit of the wear difference on the existing followers versus the brand new followers. So the name of this segment is Don't Ask Questions, but we're gonna give some answers. Sean is currently removing the brand new, do we have exhaust or intake? This is, exhaust. this is our exhaust camshaft. We'll take it out of the packaging and we'll compare it to the old camshaft as well. Features there to actually label it as exhaust. Oh, okay. It says right here exhaust. Left. Left. So we know what bank it is. This is the correct camshaft for this bank. Additionally, what we'll probably notice, and if you've been watching the video so far to date, this is the tooth that we were missing. This is the tooth as it looks while it's missing. <laughs> Big difference, right? Yes, no. Okay, what next, John? I mean, uh, what are we Eddie, installing what, what are we gonna do here? We're gonna lube, these, gonna up, lube these up, put a little bit of uh, installation lube on them and reinstall it right back here. So again, the, the concept here is we've got brand new surfaces that have not been mated together yet. We need to pre-apply lubricant to those surfaces. So when the engine first starts up, we're not running metal to metal. The other thing to realize, 
don't just take stuff apart and throw it all in a in a pile. These guys are labeled. There's numbers on there. And each one is important. And there's even a little arrow showing which way it points toward the front of the engine. All that's important because the wear pattern underneath, you see there's some slight wear pattern there. That's where the two have kind of mated together and they're, they're happy. We want to keep that going. All right, we're, uh, we're back to work reassembling and we've gone and purchased some McLaren authorized materials. Actually, we're working today with Max Black RTV. This is uh, anywhere the two metal halves come together. For example, here's the top of the engine and the bottom of the engine. You can see some previous sealant here. We're gonna place a little dab here and a little here for the front cover. We'll do the same thing in the areas as indicated for the valve cover and around the front seal. There's actually not a, there's not a RTV, there's not a rubber gasket here. It's all RTV. So we'll clean this down. We'll put our new McLaren approved Max Black RTV, no sponsorship. So Mac, if you want to send me a couple of these, go for it. All right, let's have fun. So now we're going to turn over the motor. Now we've got uh, everything put together on the front end. So all this is back. Uh, both cams are in. All the parts that need replacing are replaced. We're going to turn it over and see if we get oil coming back out because there's a very small amount of oil still in the motor. So I can see these are starting to lube. See them? Yeah, I can't tell if it's assembly lube or... No, that's, but it's... Down here, I see this one's got a little bit more. Are you lubing on that side? I heard it squirting. So if you remember, at the very beginning of this video, I took the under tray pan off and we noticed that there was definitely an oil leak somewhere. And we determined that a good time to find that is when the engine's out. We can see the top of it, side, bottom, everything. We can get to it. So we're kind of looking into this now as we're cleaning this up, but there is an enormous amount of gunk that you can see here that's coming off it. So this is not like a, it's been a little bit. This has been a long time that this has accumulated a bunch of dirt and grime and everything from the oil. So all on top of the transmission here, We've got quite a bit of just general filth that has collected. The engine itself, heads and everything, are still clean. So there's definitely not any oil there. Uh, we noticed some pools of fluid. Now this one over here happens to be directly under that hydraulic line. So when we disconnected that, it's very possible that some of that may have dripped down onto here. But then we also have some pools up here in the middle. And the coolant reservoir is actually sitting right above this. So you wouldn't see it uh, if you happen to spill any down there. We just don't know how it would get there. Um, here, you may have had it if you tried, uh, this is where the engine oil filter is. If you tried pre-filling the filter and then you tipped it over, it would just dump out. And it's possible that that could be from that. But back here, that doesn't exactly explain it. So we're not exactly sure where this oil mess is coming from, but it's all over this half. So we're still investigating that, but that's where we're at in regards to the mess and random oil and that kind of stuff. All right, we've got everything back here on the front. Everything's lined back up. We've got valve covers back on. We've got brand new coils, brand new spark plugs. Now is the time to change these out when it's much, much easier. So we've got all new ones. You can't get just the gaskets for these valve covers. So you have to buy the whole thing. So we've got new ones on both sides. So we've got a nice refresh and I almost hit my head on that. But all this maintenance stuff, perfect time to do it. It's done. So now we're almost to the point that we can make this be more in there. Uh, the oil thing, we're not exactly sure. We cleaned it all up. Um, the one possibility that it might be, we're unsure of, we may investigate this more, 
if this reservoir is actually cracked somewhere, or there's some kind of leak, or there's a hose down here that's actually been replaced in the past, it's possible that maybe that was leaking at some point and they just never cleaned it up. Uh, so we may investigate that further. Um, but otherwise, we have no idea where that oil came from. A lot of it looks pretty fresh. Uh, so it may have just been a, an ugly pour, something like that. Uh, but we will be getting this more here shortly. So a few things has happened that happened when I wasn't here. Uh, it actually is 400 miles round trip for me to come here. And uh, Kevin and Eddie took it upon themselves to do a little bit more work while I wasn't here, which was put the whole damn thing in. It's in there. So here's the time lapse. <laughs> So we're getting uh, fuel primed, we're getting everything primed here, and this is gonna be the first start, the actual first not start, not the YouTube first start. And headphone users, be warned, this is gonna be loud. This is straight off the turbo. So straight off the spinny boys. First time, now we don't have any coolant here, so we don't want to leave it running very long. Um, I'm surprised it, it, we're just getting this going. Like First start went oh, well.
All right, now here's where we're at now. We're at a new day. Um, we've obviously got the bumper back on, tail lights back in. This covers what we're securing right now. Uh, to do that, you have to go through the fender well, the bolts are under there. That's how we got that out. So that's getting secure. Then we can put the uh, panel right there back in, which is the flip up, uh, all of the other stuff under that cover. We've already got secure everything in the frunk. So we've got to finish putting this all back together. Uh, then we'll be good to go. Now we have already done a test drive. We did that with the bumper off. Um, we did have tail lights in, so it was safe. We had the tag on, so it was legal. So we, uh, we did test drive. Everything is as expected. Uh, you saw on the first start that it started right up, no problem. It drove no problem. Everything was great. So we're good there. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you do that before you go through all of this to put it back on. So we did. It's good. We're going to get this the rest back together. And then we should have a completely perfect car. Now, one other note. Earlier in the video, we found an oil leak, and we were not exactly sure where it came from. And we have found it because we cleaned everything under here. It was caked on. You saw it. We cleaned every single thing. But what is actually leaking is the axle seal right in there. And it's kind of really hard to tell. But right up against the transmission, that seal in there is what is leaking. And the way that we discovered that is, uh, remember, we cleaned everything up. And if we look very closely, which you won't be able to tell from this angle, there's a little bit of oil right around the CV axle. And then right below it, on the diffuser down here, so right in this area, it was slinging it just a little bit. We found just a very, very small amount of it. And that's how we discovered what it was. Now that's not a result of anything that we were doing in this job. That is something that had to have been happening way beforehand for all of the oil that was just everywhere in there. Now, so that's been a long time issue um, that will have to be addressed. That's not a seal that you can just pop into a parts store and get. Uh, so that's where we're at. We did find where that leak was coming from. So good for that one. We've identified the issue. And when this thing is all together, you're gonna see it driving. And there it is, it's our running, driving, engine out, camera placed, MP4 12C. This was a big, big project. And I'm not gonna say that anybody could do it, but it wasn't as bad as it really could have been. We didn't have any hiccups. Everything just started to work fine. All the sensors got plugged in, all the cables and hoses and everything else. No issues there, all the went in, everything worked fine and it's now good to go and it can go back to the owner. There's a lot of other things that we're doing to the car too, uh, some of which have already been done, uh, but he is absolutely going to love the end result of what we got going here. And if you found this video entertaining or informative or otherwise, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Check out the other videos on the channel. There's all kinds of DIY stuff. I know this one was a little bit different than normal but I hope you enjoyed it. So I'll see you in the next one. You're still watching this? You must have it on autoplay and you're just running stuff, going through playlists and just going one thing after the other. No, seriously, the video is done, but it's still running.